Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the North Carolina Living Channel. Um, really appreciate all of you guys tuning in and checking out what we're going on. I know on this channel we're we're like all over the place. We've got all kinds of videos, hiking in the mountains, we've got gardening videos, landscape videos, and a lot of information about Japanese maples, one of my favorite things to talk about. And today I've got a spring update video. Now, recently I posted a fall video that was a little bit late to the game. Uh, I had recorded the video and uh, never got around to putting it together and putting it on there. And so I was like, man, do I post this? I don't know if people are even be interested. It's like out of season, but you guys have like really, really showed up and seemed to really enjoyed that video. So I'm glad that I took the time to go ahead and put it out there because it was pretty awesome. Uh, for to see the response, lots of comments from you guys. I think I've already got over a thousand views on that video. So really appreciate that. Um, it was fun to share all those amazing colors that the Japanese maples go to in fall. Um, but today is the first spring video that I have. <clears throat> here in 2024 um, right here I believe today is uh, the 2nd of April April 2nd 2024 so uh, we're pretty much in full swing um, here in the garden here in rural garden so I'm excited to share a few things with you not everything is in full leaf yet so I'm gonna skip around a little bit and hit all the highlights and then I'll probably have a follow-up video once things really get in full swing and uh but again i appreciate everybody for tuning in to the videos on our channel we do all kinds of stuff so if you like all this like subscribe and share all that good stuff and uh, we appreciate you so let's get to it here it is the spring interest video of 2024 for japanese maples all right so first up on the list is going to be, uh, I say this about every maple, but it's so true. One of my favorites, uh, obviously. They're all my favorite. I is, So if I say this one's my favorite, I truly do mean it, even though they're all my favorite. Uh, I've never met a maple I didn't like. So first up here, we got Acer Shirasawanum Royalty. Now, this thing is just starting to leaf out, not fully opened up yet, but we've got some really nice uh, maroon reds going on right now. Let's see if I can get in here and get everything in focus. Um, really nice leaf on this plant. I, I love the texture that this gives. I mean, if you're looking for like a red upright, you know, most of the time you're gonna think of like a blood good or an emperor one which are great, absolutely beautiful Japanese maples, but this gives you just something a little extra. I really do like this style of leaf. Uh, it's what they call a Matsumure style where the lobes are deeply divided back and uh, gives you a really interesting texture and feel on that leaf. Then you're like standard, more kind of rounded, uh, full, uh, maple uh, palmatum leaf um, so I really like this this style here and you get that sheer solemn influence uh, but yeah Acer sheer solemn royalty really really nice spring colors on that and if you remember and I'll try to include this in today just so we can kind of get a full scope but this goes to some really nice yellows and oranges in the fall so you have this really bright uh, burgundy red going to yellow and oranges in the fall. So really cool cultivar. Definitely highly recommend royalty. So moving on to the next one here. And I love to show like contrast and just the way my mind thinks when I think of placement of uh, Japanese maples. So I've got the royalty here, nice uh, vibrant burgundy reds uh, in the middle here is an azalea this was planted here uh, already when we bought the house i don't know what variety this is but it's a nice 
bright fiery red uh, which is really pretty uh, starting to get some nice blooms on that it won't be long and then on this other side moving on to the next japanese maple i have another sheer saw with them so this right here gonna be a little bit harder to see this um, it's not fully leafed yet but this is Acer Sirisolanum Blue Moon. Now, this is an introduction by Carl Munn, uh, a good friend of mine, and he has some of the most amazing introductions. I love uh, this plant, and then he also has Moonrise. I know there are several others uh, that I can't think of at the top of my head right now, but he has some really, really cool cultivars, and this is no exception to that. This is uh, Acer Sirisolanum Blue Moon, it comes out that really nice, like coppery orange color. Um, kind of gives you kind of similar to that, you know, like the autumn moon or moonrise gives you that vibe. Leaves are a little bit different than your typical golden full moon uh, maples. Uh, one of the reasons I'm sure that Carl selected this one. Beautiful, beautiful foliage on it. Um, relatively new most uh, not a lot of uh, people have this in the garden um, definitely one that uh, I think a lot of people should be gravitating towards really love that just kind of nice coppery orange color with the green underneath gives it a really nice feel and contrasts really well with the red Chirisolanum over here. We have this nice orange Chirisolanum here with the red azalea between. So definitely uh, a really nice cultivar. Add it to your list. Definitely want one of these in your garden. Acer Chirisolanum Blue Moon. All right, moving on to the next one here. Uh, this this maple right here is just really really uh amazing the intricacy of its leaves are just stunning it really is it draws you in makes you want to look closer at it this is acer palmatum mariel um, this is absolutely stunning lace leaf variety let me get in here and let you guys see some of these leaves check that out man it's got a really nice red border just on the tips and super finely dissected leaves. They look so delicate, uh, but it's really not. I mean, most Japanese maples are very durable plants, especially if you plant them in the right conditions in the right zones. Um, you know, they're very hardy plants and easy to grow. Uh, but Marielle just, I mean, I, I just love, you know, there are a lot of lace leaves out there. Again, I always like to try to find kind of a a newer, more exciting version of the uh, very commonly known Japanese maple. So you see a lot of the uh, green lace leaves out there, Viridus, uh, Waterfall, you know, a lot of those, which are absolutely stunning. And I have some of those, but you know, Marielle just gives you something a little bit extra, gives you that green lace leaf uh, look and feel in the garden but it draws you in to take a closer look and just gives you some of the most ornate, finely <clears throat> dissected leaves. Such a great cultivar, highly underrated. I mean, this, this should be, you know, the standard for green lace leaves. It just sets the bar so high and gives you so much extra out of that green lace leaf Japanese maple. So there it is, Acer Palmatum Marielle. Before I move on, I'll just show you a little bit of what I like to do is, I like to, if I get a cultivar that's a younger, smaller size, uh, now I don't always do this, but I like to pot them up and display them here on my front porch. I get to enjoy them every day, get to see them grow. And I've got these sitting up here I believe this is Ichigo G, Japanese Princess, and Kin Pai. Uh, 
just uh, three that I've got sitting up on the porch, sitting out behind my Marielle here. So let's uh, let's move on to the next one. So I'm kind of following a little bit of the same route as I followed on some of my fall videos. Easy way to kind of walk my garden, keep track of where I'm at. But right here we've got Acer Palmatum Yellow Threads. I love the linear lobum style Japanese maples or the strap leaf. These have such a unique texture and look about them. Uh, when you think of Japanese maples, the typical leaf shape is not what you see here. And uh, so this really does bring a whole new level of interest to uh, Japanese maples in general. And uh, really exciting to watch this one leaf out. You've got these little green hairs that come op open up. Um, this gives you a really nice yellow color. I have mine in a lot of shade. So I don't get as bright a yellow as it could if you had it in more sun. Um, but this is a, a great cultivar. Um, I, it's one of my favorites. When it comes to the linear lobums, definitely one of my favorites. And i uh, excited to have it in my collection. And this thing gets the most intense yellow you'll ever see in the fall. Uh, absolutely beautiful fall colors as well. So yellow threads, a very fitting name for such a beautiful lace, uh, linear lobum style Japanese maple. Uh, really, really enjoy this. Definitely highly recommend yellow threads. And before I move on, it's not fully in leaf, so we'll just talk about it quickly. Um, right over here, just in contrast, I have a Acer Palmatum Pung Kill. Now, Pung Kill is a red linear lobum. Uh, really dark bold reds on this cultivar. I've got this planted across the, the sidewalk up to the house um, from the yellow threads to provide an, a really cool contrast between the red linear lobum and the yellow green linear lobum on this side. I always like to try to put into context of what I'm trying to create here with all the different varieties of Japanese maples. So moving on. All right, next up on the list here, we have a amazing cultivar that I know a lot of people are gonna wish they could get their hands on. This is Acer Palmatum Naniwa Benny. Absolutely love this cultivar. I love it so much that I now have two of them in my garden. Very few maples make the list enough high up on my list enough to have two of them in my garden because real estate is limited and uh, I have so many different cultivars I like to, to grow. Uh, this is one that uh, really shows out. I mean, this color here that you see is just so vibrant. Uh, you can see those like yellowing lines throughout, almost some veining in that, kind of a two-tone oranges and Kind of a red blushing over top. Really, really cool Japanese maple. You know, I hear uh, Matt Nichols talk about this as probably one of the coolest Japanese maples out there. And I tend to agree uh, with him on that. I think, you know, I think they're excited to get more of this into production and get it more into people's yard. Um, I've got a second one that is planted in more sun and uh, you'll see the difference when I get to it. This here is planted in pretty heavy shade, so I'm getting some lighter tones, but it really gives you some nice contrast in the, the lighter and darker colors on that leaf. But Acer Palmatum Naniwa Benny, really, really cool tree. Uh, just like always changing, these colors are always changing. So it's just really rose in the ranks of one of my favorite Japanese maples awesome tree moving on all right here we go this japanese maple right here is insane one of the coolest leaves you'll ever see i mean it almost looks fake 
uh, the way the, uh, the buds open up with this bright red shell around the bud. And then as the green leaf comes out, it's just so many color contrasts uh, and textures. And then the leaves on this thing are just crazy. Hope you can see it here coming across the camera. I mean, so intricate. They have all of this veining inside the leaves. The way they unfurl is just so cool. It looks like little hands opening up and uh, really provides some crazy, crazy interest when it comes to just leaves. You know, you think typically you're just thinking of a green leaf or a red leaf. This gives you a little bit of everything. Pinks, greens, whites, and you get the, the little red petiole sticking up. I mean, it just looks crazy. Just, it didn't hardly look real. I mean, and it, you know, it really makes a, a big statement. Um, just draws you in, makes you want to come up and just examine how amazing all of these different leaves are. Uh, this is Acer Palmatum Higaseyama. Not sure if I even said that. I got so excited about talking about it. Acer Palmatum Higaseyama. Just check that out, man. It's so crazy. Uh, Very, very interesting Japanese maple. Love it. You hear the birds singing out here. It is, it is a beautiful spring day. It's like 85 degrees already. All the Japanese maples are opening up, just screaming for spring. And uh, it's happening fast. So I tried to get out here today and capture some of these that are really putting on a show. On to the next one. All right. I know this one is in high demand out there. This is amazing introduction brand new from mrmaple.com those guys know how to bring it this is acer palmatum red panda this is exclusive to mr maple it's an amazing introduction this is a makawa type seedling from makawa that has some really nice red color now this has been leafed out for maybe i would say maybe five or six days um, as you can see, it's still holding some really, really nice red colors. I have this in full sun here in zone 7B in Western North Carolina. And uh, this thing is just killer. It's got some really, really small leaves. You get that amazing Makawa style growth habit, tightly layered, but you get this crazy red color instead of your typical greens that you see with the Makawa Yatsubusa cultivar. Um, this is one of my favorites. I, I mean, obviously due, due to its rarity, but not just that, but it's just, I mean, absolutely stunning. I mean, it's like such a great color. The red panda name, so cool. I mean, it's just so fitting. It really does have that Kind of a red panda color to it and i think that this cultivar is going to become one of the most popular of the makawa types out there you know matt and tim always say it and i i agree a great plant with a great name doesn't get much better than that and here it is ladies and gentlemen acer palmatum red panda this thing is looking killer today all right, so moving on to the next one here. I have a lot of kind of newer, exciting cultivars um, that are kind of setting the new standard, I think, in the industry. And this one is no exception. Uh, right here we have Aisha Shirasawa on them, Sunny. This is an introduction by Crispin Silva. Uh, this thing has some crazy oranges and yellows coming out in the spring look at that man it just bold i mean this thing makes a really really bold splash of color in my garden i always look forward to this one leafing out because it has so many different colors within the leaves and just it just really striking you know like it just pops 
against all of the greens and reds. It gives you these really nice yellows, kind of pinkish orange colors. Uh, you can see the little veining in that, little yellow veins inside the leaf. I mean, look at this thing. It's just really glowing right now. It is like a big ray of sunshine. The very fitting name, Sunny. Definitely, you can see why. It's just so bright, vibrant. Um, really cool tree. Definitely one that uh, you should add to your collection here. Here it is, Acer Shear Solomon Sunny. All right, moving on to another outstanding cultivar of Japanese maple. A beautiful dwarf, Makawa type. This is Acer Palmatum. Japanese princess. So this one is such an amazing cultivar that I have two of them. I have one in a pot on the porch in the wooden uh, pot and then I have one back here planted um, and I'm thinking about getting maybe a third maybe a fourth one. <laughs> it's one of those that I want to see this plant in every section of my garden because it's just so beautiful. Amazing dwarf and the colors on it I think are some of the most like exciting and diverse uh, changes that you see on the Makawa types. Uh, this is a Japanese princess again. Um, now we did have kind of a frost the other day, so we got a little bit of damage from the frost, but most of it's still looking very, very pristine. Absolutely beautiful colors. Look at that. I mean, you know, I. Before I got into Japanese maples, I never realized that plants like this existed. You know, when you think of it, you, you think of it like maybe a green lace leaf and a red upright. And that's kind of what you think when Japanese maples comes to your mind. But I never thought in my life that I would be looking at a plant as beautiful as this right here. And what's amazing with these uh, Japanese maples cultivars is you get to pick and choose all the flavors and colors that you like and then design a garden based purely on Japanese maples. Now I have ventured into conifers and flowering shrubs and obviously I have a lot more plants that I'm interested in but the basis and foundation of my garden is always going to be Japanese maples and right here is like I mean, if you just decided I want the most beautiful Japanese maple I could ever get my hands on, this is pretty dang close. Acer Palmatum Japanese Princess. Really nice color on that thing right now. And I uh, love the shape on this one. This is a pretty good size considering the cultivar is a very dwarf. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, really exciting to see the colors on these. I get a little I get a little jacked up man when it comes to Japanese maples in the spring but and this one definitely gets me excited so check it out Japanese princess hope you guys have been enjoying this uh, spring walkthrough of uh, a few of my choice maples that are looking really nice right now there's so many out here I have over 150 cultivars right now of Japanese maples um, and so this video could be quite long if I did every single video <laughs> that I had out here right now. So I'm gonna try to break this up and take you guys through each of the different cultivars, but I probably have to try to make it into several different videos just to keep things under a certain time limit. I don't wanna drag this on so long you guys lose interest and say, man, this guy's crazy. But uh, so behind me here, is a couple of nice Japanese maple. We got one in a pot down here, got one right here. Not quite opened up all the way yet. I think I'm gonna save these for the next episode that I've got for the spring of 2024 in the rural gardens with Japanese maples. So thanks for tuning in, really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed some of the cultivars I talked about today. I'll try to remember in my head which ones I talked about today which ones I'll talk about tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Uh, I could go on and on and on about Japanese maples, but I want to keep this within a reasonable amount of time. So appreciate you tuning in. And uh, if you have a cultivar in mind you'd like to see more about, 
chances are I got it or I can tell you more about it. So uh, let me know in the comments and uh, appreciate everybody. Take care.